So the 51 has worked in some bizarre postmodernistic genre bending inventive titles before Killer7, but it was this game that really introduced his style of game to the entire world. Released in 2005 on GameCube and PlayStation 2 by Capcom and co written and produced by Shinji Mikami at that, it became an instant cult hit. This bizarre mix of on rails shooter and adventure game with story topics ranging from political conspiracies to superhero anime satire. <laughs> All told through Dream Logic narrative was a clear love it or hate it. For years, despite its popularity, the game remained an exclusive to that era of games until in 2018 a surprise PC port was announced. A port that manages to both not change anything substantially and at the same time overhaul the entire game experience. As with most Suda51 games, Killer7 wasn't particularly fun to play due to a lot of janky ideas and mechanics, which often led to people suggesting watching Let's Plays of this game over finding it and playing it for themselves. But PC port changes that. Keyboard and mouse controls make this game actually fun to play. Um, also easy which, in case of Killer7, is a good thing. Now you can enjoy all of the weird, all of the stylish, all of the amazing that the original game had, but without most of the annoyances that plagued the game originally. It also looks and sounds great, as it did in 2005, but it's even better now as the game scales with the resolutions beautifully. Native support for 16x9 is also present, with the ability to limit the ratio to 4x3 as the game was originally designed. There are overhauled 2D elements, English subtitles for all the voices, ability to play the original Japanese version with the English voices and text, and the music, well, it still kicks ass and remains one of the most memorable game soundtracks. Same goes for the narrative that is engrossing, unconventional in its presentation and totally makes sense until you stop and think about it when it stops making any sense. And it's great, it's actually not a criticism in this case as the game is really good at tackling serious and silly topics while also being very dreamlike about it, being both clear and falling apart at the same time. A couple of things in the remastered port are a bit off. Mouse controls are usable, but also not very good. The widescreen resolutions don't attempt to reframe some of the scenes and shots, which occasionally reveal additional elements that are clearly not meant to be there stylistically as part of the original claustrophobic 4x3 shot. And it is a bit of a shame that some additional content, like the Hand in Killer 7 book, hasn't been also made available in addition to the amazing remastered soundtrack, though some elements of it seem to be used in the art book that was made available. Oh, and saving is still manual, which might annoy some people who aren't used to doing that. The only big annoyances here are the same as they were in the original game. Some elements are just not as clear or never explained anywhere, most puzzles are a complete joke, yet some of them are super obtuse to figure out or just frustrating to complete and it ruins the pacing, and some encounters, even with mouse controls making things much easier, are just cheap. All of this isn't as infuriating as it sometimes was in the original game due to all the quality of life improvements and loading being much faster, but it's still annoying. Killer7 is a game that simply must be experienced at least once. It is unlike anything you've played. And with the remastered PC port, for the first time it is actually fun to play. 